Well, hey, what's up? I uh, Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford. For those of you guys I haven't met yet, I'm an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator. And um, this is a weekly show where I riff on Access Consciousness tools for a, in and around a topic. If I sound a little bit sleep drunk, it's because I might be. <laughs> I had a super late night last night. Hi, guys. I see you joining. Um, I was uh, flying back in from Ottawa from a conference that I went to, and um, the flight got really delayed, and then I realized that I had locked my keys out of my apartment, and then we had – anyway, it was a whole adventure last night. Hi. So anyway, um, so – so we're going to see how this goes. I, um, I got a bunch of questions from you guys around this week's topic. And what I called this week's episode was making the real unreal. I didn't call it making the real unreal. Actually, I have a call series coming up this next weekend. But basically, like, what are you making real that may not be? And um, this, this whole topic and this whole call series, hi, you guys, I love you, came out of um, a, a, about a, a month of, of things and events and occurrences that, um, that I, that I, I can't talk today. <laughs> can we just do like a, can I just do a mind meld today? The English is broken. Um, yeah, this last month has just been really a lot of awareness for me and you know, I don't know about you guys, but life occurs and you do what you do with it. And, um, one of the things that I re really began to realize is that for me to have difficulty in any area, didn't matter what it was. If I was going to have difficulty in with relationships or difficulty with money or difficulty, I was making something, probably more than one thing, but something real that just wasn't real. And I remember the, the first few times that I began to discover or hear that need of money wasn't real. It was kind of a pisser because like I did, I, I, I could feel it, right? Like need felt real. And if you looked at my bank accounts, that seemed to be validated by what was in my bank accounts. You do need money. Jesus, you're in bad, bad shape, you know. But it literally, literally wasn't, the, wasn't until the moment when I let go of need as a real reality that I was able to actually start creating and generating and being whatever it took to have money. It was after the moment that I let go of need as a reality that I was able to choose to create and have money. Um, so this, so recently with, with some things that have really gone on in, in relationships for me, there was, there's been some really like dramatic wake up calls. And one of the questions I started to ask myself was what have I not been willing to be aware of and what have I made real that isn't? Because here's the thing you guys, like to be able to, to be, to be blindsided by anybody or any kind of behavior or to be taken off guard or to be in any kind of situation that just doesn't work for you, you have to be cutting off your awareness. And I'm actually super grateful that it's that simple because then I could just go, well, what am I not willing to be aware of? Now, I'm not saying that when you become aware of it, it's super comfortable. <laughs> awareness is not always comfortable, y'all. But it is always a place where I can ask another question and then get empowered with what I know. So I'm going to dive into your questions. If you guys... Um, I'm on my computer today and not my phone, which is a little bit of a different muscle to look, go where to look. But anyway, if you have questions about this or this brings up something for you, please put it in the comments. And I see all of you, I adore you. And, um, and let's, let's play. Okay, I'm gonna dive into the first question that was sent. Okay, Anna wrote in to me and she said, um, thank you so much for the opportunity to write something. I acknowledge that every time I create a new product, I choose to procrastinate and I don't want to show it to people. Creating is so light and telling about it and inviting people is so heavy. What can I do to outcreate this? Okay, so how many of you guys uh, have these places in your life where you're like, you know that whatever you're going to choose here is going to create more and that's the place where you stop? Like, you know it. You look at the future it's going to create, like, you're like, yep, if I choose to put that out there, it's going to be great. Like, I can already perceive it. How, how many of you guys know when something is going to create more? And is it at that moment that you choose to stop creating? Like, ah! And it can feel intense. It can feel like fear. It can feel like um, it'll show up as procrastination. It'll show up in all these different ways and feel all these different ways. Okay. So, uh, me too. And... 
what I've really noticed is that I will only do that right before the thing that's going to like explode me into more of me I've ever had before, more possibility than I've ever had before, more, you know, choice than I've ever had before. I'll stop. That's the moment where I'll stop, you know, and that's the moment where, where fear will feel really real or, uh, doubts will fear, feel really real. And I think what a lot of us do is we try to wait for that moment where it's I, until it stops feeling real or it goes away or we've run enough clearings that we don't feel that anymore. But the thing about fear and doubt is that no matter how intense the sensation is in your body, it's a, it's a distractor implant. <laughs> it's a distractor implant. It's a distractor. And so this is one of the things I realized about as you know, God, about the creation of your life is that you are going to hit those moments where you are putting off and procrastinating the things or you're afraid or whatever, wherever I've said just now, you're going to hit that. That's going to happen. And you will always in those moments have the freedom to choose. And I've had to really exercise and I'm, you know, I'm going through another um, growth spurt right now in terms of what I'm choosing to do in my days and with my days and connecting with people. And, and so I'm, I'm retraining muscles on the inside of me where basically like, I don't know about you, but I really like to be by myself. I like my alone time and I like to, you know, say hi to people from a distance, but really talking to them in person is not, it's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> But Gary Douglas talks all the time about how to create your business. Um, he's like, if you want people to show up live in your classes, he's like, be interested in three to five people a day, five to eight people a week, like really pretty much anybody else besides you, contact them and make that a consistent part of your work. And, you know, I would say I'm definitely talking to more people than I ever have before. But, you know, what I know, like I was outside today and one of the, I'm noticing as I'm putting myself in situations where there are other people that I can be interested in, I'm noticing where my, my, my habit right now, my internal automatic choice is to go to um, not doing it, is to go to, oh, I've got other stuff I need to do, is to go to, oh, I'm, I'm on a mission and I don't want to stop and pause that mission. I mean, there's just all this internal, what has been a really silent story around not choosing that. And so I know that for me to outcreate this, for me to be greater than I've ever been before, for me to be as great as I can truly be, I've got to just continue to stay present with me and continue to come up to that moment where I will normally choose, at least my, new, my old normal is to choose not to do it. I got to continue to come up to that moment, put myself in those situations, and then choose beyond it. You've got a set of automatic pilot reactions already in place for things that will make you go boom. And our automatic pilot reaction is to avoid the things that make us too much greater. And there are these actions that you know that if you take them will catapult you into a reality beyond this reality, into unrecognizable territory, into discomfort that you are not comfortable with. And so my invitation to you would be, what would it be like? What would it be like to retrain your muscles around those things? What would it be like to just retrain, just, just retrain? Like, um, I'm trying to think of like how I could talk about this in an even different way. Because the thing that I keep realizing is that when I make something real, so if I make, if I make this thing around talking to people real, right? Oh, I have a problem, for example. That would be making it real. Oh, I've got this problem with talking to people. I don't have a problem talking to people. But if I do that, if I go, well, I've got this problem talking to people, all of a sudden, I'm functioning from a place where if I see another person, I now have to overcome the problem to get to the thing, to be able to talk to the person, instead of just, oh, in this moment, I have another choice. And so it creates it into this big gargantuan thing that's filled with fear and doubt and, and all these other points of view that I can't articulate right now that then, I, that then I'm burdened with. I don't even have the language as opposed to, oh, I've been choosing for a really long time to not talk to people. Simple. Like, that's just what I've been choosing. So what would my life be like if I actually just chose something else in all these different moments? 
And how many different places in my day can I start to put myself in situations where I get to practice that new choice? Do you guys see how that sounds like a, a subtle, it sounds like a subtle difference. And the activity on the outside might even look the same, but from where you're functioning in here is really different. Because in the second example, what I've made real is my ability to choose. That is the real thing. Now, it, it may not be the thing I'm substantiating right now. Maybe, some, maybe right now I'm substantiating the fact, fact that I have a problem. But what if I was willing to put my energy and creative energy into that I always have another choice? And so even if, for example, like, you know, today I was in the, the thing and I was getting a thing and I was eating things. I can't talk today. Um, <laughs> and I was really, I actually passed up like four different literal op openings to just get into brief conversations with other people. And it was funny because I didn't recognize it till after it was gone because my automatic choice up to this point has been to just not really chat with people. <laughs> Excuse me. And I had reasons. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the first thing I noticed was that my automatic choice was to not talk. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I actually didn't realize that I chose that all the time. And you're going to have these areas of your life where you have always kind of chosen in a certain way. You've always chosen to react in a certain way, for example, with people, or you've always chosen this one way of being with money, or I'll give you another example. Um, yesterday, I actually started my bookkeeping for my business, which I have literally been procrastinating for probably four years. And I, I'm serious. I got done the amount of work yesterday in like two hours, what I thought was going to take me two weeks, <laughs> and realized that I could actually get caught up on this probably within a, a week just by continuing to choose and do the things that I was continuing to choose and do. And um, it, was, it was just another one of those places where I, my automatic choice has been to avoid this thing and not do this thing and have it in my, on my to-do list but never do it. Or, and I realized over the weekend I was at a conference and one of the things uh, one of the speakers said she's like you know every single day I make a list I make a list basically she kind of does a brain dump of all the things that she thinks needs her attention and then she looks at that and she goes what are the three top things that are going to create the biggest in impact if I choose them so I started playing with that because I was like I, you know I'm really been inviting myself to start facing the things that I'm avoiding or not choosing because I'm only avoiding them because I've made them real in some way. I've made the difficulty I'm going to have when I need to deal with them real. I've made, there's something about them I've made way more powerful than me. And that's why I'm avoiding them. And so I don't know what changed over the weekend. Well, there was so much to change, but I literally looked at the things that I was avoiding and I'm like, okay, what if I chose to do this right now? And there was two particular things. One was starting my bookkeeping and the other was um, figuring out how to get money from my U.S. account to my Canadian account, which somehow had been this massive ordeal. And it did take a minute because you have to, you had to set up, you had to set up a few things and I had to go back and forth between the two accounts and I had to like set it up as an international wire transfer. And it wasn't as simple as just clicking a button, which is what I really wanted it to be. Um, but, but it was, um, but it was doable. I, and so literally within like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I chose the thing that I've been putting all my energy into avoiding for like the last, I don't even know however long I've been down in the States. It's, you know, so the last nine months. So how much energy are you using to make things real that aren't, are you choosing? And everything that is times a Godzilla, where you destroy it and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all in shorts, boys and beyonds. How much energy are you using to make things real that aren't, are you choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all in shorts, boys and beyonds. That was the thing that got me about all this was like I was using all of my creative energy to avoid this thing and not do this thing. And, you know, um, continued, I was keeping a low growl in my world all the time with these choices and not just facing them and going, yeah, you, I'm choosing this, I'm choosing this, I'm choosing this, right? So let's talk about that then as it applies to, well, I want to get into all the things. I want to talk about that as it applies to relationships. But you guys send in questions. Okay, so anyway, hopefully that was helpful around her particular question. So my thing is like, hey, if you didn't avoid it and you actually, um, what are you using for your bookkeeping? Oh, QuickBooks Online. I love it. QuickBooks Online. So good. So good, so good. Um, 
Okay, I'm going back to your questions because otherwise I'll just fucking talk your ear off about me. Okay, Eileen. Um, first of all, I'm putting it out there. What would it take for me to be live on your call, making the real unreal? So this is a call series I'm doing starting on Friday, a live call series. If you're watching this in the future, you can message me if you missed it. Um, but it's going to be $222. There's going to be global pricing and three calls really looking at um, and clearing out and having a different conversation about where you've been sticking yourself with making things real. So she goes, this is a money question. She goes, money, so my question for Monday, Monday is, money is power in this reality. Is that real? I'm struggling with making that unreal so that I can outcreate it. But I have a certain lust for money, and I would like to create more with it, even though I'm good at creating without it. I feel like I've made it more than me. How to have money, but not to be at the effect of money. And actually, if you look at the energy, thank you so much, Eileen, by the way. Um, if you look at the energy of her question, there's a lot of like cross wires, like conflictual universes. You can go, well, I want this, but I can't have this, but this, and then it's this. All of which is trying to figure out the problem of why can't I have more money in my life? So everything that is for all of us, we destroy it and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. So what have you made real about money that isn't real, that if you didn't make it real, would give you total clarity and ease? And everything that is, times a godzillion, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. So let's just break this apart a little bit because I think she's pretty much speaking for all of us with money. She goes, money is power in this reality. Is that real? So the first thing you guys have to start to look at, we all have to be so much more present with ourselves as we're talking about things, as we're doing things, as we're being things in this world, okay? Money is power in this reality. She said that like it's a fact. These are the things that are going to stick you. And this is when we, when we say something like it's a fact, we make, we're making it real. So she said, money is power in this reality. Is that real? But the first part of it is where she stuck herself. And this is what we do all the time. Money is power in this reality. How do I outcreate that? Well, this is where we do the access consciousness tools. Interesting point of view. I have that point of view. Now, what does that do? It starts to unravel where you've made it real that money is power in this reality. If you guys have not read the How to Become Money Workbook yet, and you've just let it collect dust on your nightstand, or you've let it to your friend and you haven't watched it yet, or watched it, listened to it yet, or read it, go get it. Go get it. Go through it. Okay. The How to Become Money Workbook will unreal your whatever is stuck in your world about money faster than any other tool, faster than this show ever. Okay. How to Become Money. And the reason is because it goes through all these different facets of where you've made money real. Any point of view you have about money, any, any of them, and it doesn't matter what it is, is a place where you've made something real about money that isn't. Money is tofu. Money is energy. Money is just a, a, a set of possibilities, things that you can use to create with. But if you make it power and then you're like, okay, money is power, right? So how do I outcreate that? I'll tell you. You go back to the first thing and go, wait, is money power? No. Shit. What have I made real that isn't? And everything that is, times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now, some of this is going to like make you feel like, there's been times in my life where I've been, I do this with myself, and then I get myself to the place where it's really just space. And I'm like, well, now what? Right? <laughs> well, if that's not real and that's not real, then what is real? That's just it. There is no real. Nothing is real. It's, it's only choice. That's what's real. It's, the reality is it's only choice. Everything is only choice. Having money is just a choice. And not having money is just a choice. Having difficulty with money is just a choice. Having feelings is just a choice. Having a business is just a choice. Having a great, all of it's choice. Getting ourselves to the place where we can function like that, where it's truly just, it's all just a choice. Okay, cool. Is, is for me, what I've discovered is the process. So, Let's go back to her question. And so unraveling that first point of view is just, well, is, there, is money really power in this reality? Yes, no, no. Oh, well, what have I made real that isn't? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all in shorts, boys and beyonds. So she goes, I'm struggling with making that unreal so that I can outcreate it. But here's again, this is so great. Thank you so much for writing this in. I'm struggling with making that unreal. So guess what is also a choice? 
struggle? What if it wasn't a struggle to make that unreal? What if you could literally blah, 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 ask a question and go, truth, is that real? Yes or no? No. Now, like, like I said in last week's show, this, in this process of tricking yourself into greater choice, because that's exactly what we're doing here, you're going to discover these places where you really want to hold on to a point of view really bad. You really like that one. It's like your favorite pet. Okay. This may be one of those places, and this may seem weird. Why would I want to hold on to that one if I know it's not real? There's no good reason. You just do. We only hold on to things that are serving us in some way, right? So you may discover, like, I really want to hold on to that money is power because when I ask, is it real? No. I still am like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. So where did I buy it? From whom did I buy it? And everything that is right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds. This is where the tools of access consciousness come into play. When you can't, when you can't simply just make another choice, like because you always have another choice. Let's say you you hear that you come out of your mouth, like money is power. You've got 18 billion other choices right in that moment. That was one of them. You got all these others, but you may not actually be able to perceive or know or be or receive your other choices. So. Just notice where you're stuck and go, okay, if anywhere you're stuck is where you've made something real. Anywhere that something is sticking you, you've made something real. There's only just a lie there. So you can use a clearing to get it unstuck. Just who's, whose lies and what lies am I using to create this as real? Am I choosing would be another one. And everything that is right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds, and just loop that. And that's going to start to shave off the unconsciousness. Here's the other thing to make something real that isn't real, you've got to use unconsciousness to do it. Total awareness is where everything is space and lightness and ease and receiving and choice. That's total awareness. Stuck and unconsciousness is where you have a point of view and you cannot get into something else. It's so unconscious. I can't see what I'm choosing. I can't see another choice. I can't perceive that I have another choice. I can't perceive the greatness of me. Nothing. Unconsciousness. <laughs> so whose lies and what lies am I using to be as unconscious as I'm choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion, right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds would be another really great one. All right, let's go back into her question. So she goes, but I have a certain lust for money and I would like to create more with it even though I'm creating good without it. I feel like I've made it more than me. How to have money but not be at the effect of money. And literally, I'm serious, I should be an affiliate I am an affiliate for the How to Become Money Workbook. I'm going to be its spokesperson. <laughs> Literally, you guys, if you want to change, money is one of those areas. There's money, relationships, sex, family, you know, are these areas where we have so, we have like billions of points of view that we've made more real than our ability to choose. If what's really true about you is that your power and your awareness and your creativity and you are money, that's what's really true about you. When you're functioning as you, that's what's true. Anything else besides that, any other sensation, any other worry, any other thing, like it's not, it's not true, it's not real. Um, I forget who I was talking to this morning. Dang, I really wanna tell you that story. Oh, yeah, let me tell you this story because I was chatting with this morning about so I work with a lot of people around the world and um, we all have different ways of playing together and some, you know, everybody gets paid in different ways working with my business. And so there was this one girl in particular who's so brilliant, who's been really choosing more inside of her own world. And so what's starting to ha what starts to happen is you choose more and you are starting to demand more for yourself and you start to include you more in your reality. There's going to be things that you've already chosen that are already occurring in your reality that are going to start to grate because they no longer match where you're like, ah, that no longer matches what I'd like to have as my life. So that was starting to occur for her and I could tell. And so anyway, I just went directly to her and I'm like, Hey, what's up? Like, tell me what it is that you'd like to receive for doing this job because it's, I get that it's not working for you. So tell me what you'd like to receive. And we went into this conversation where she actually had to sort of pull out of her world the uncomfort of beginning to ask and choose to have what she'd really like to have as her reality. And I, I, I made her uncomfortable on purpose. Because, and there was this moment where she was like, oh, you're making me sweat. And I was like, I know. 
I was like, because it's at this moment that you are, when I ask you like, how much would you like, how much would you like for this? You know, what would you like to receive for this? At that moment, what we'd all start to do is we start to look into everybody else's worlds to see what we can say there that will make sure that we don't lose and they don't lose, but mostly that we don't lose while we win, while we try to not lose. And so we go into all this computation about the thing that can come out of our mouth that's going to be the winning thing. And I said, well, she's like, ah, oh, you're making me sweat. And I was like, I know, because this is what's going on. I said, but none of that's real. The only thing that's real is that you have total choice here and the universe will support you no matter what you choose. It may not be me that can deliver what you would like to have. I, I'm aware of that, but the universe will support what you'd like to have. So all you have to be willing to do is let it come out of your mouth because nothing's real. This is all made up. And if you'd like to have more money, just start asking for more money from the people, from not from the people, from around the people. You know, what have you decided is impossible to have? that you've let keep you from choosing to ask for what you'd really like to have. And everything that is, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shirts, boys and beyonds, what do you really want to have? You know, what are you not willing to lose that you've decided is more real, right? Like there's, all, there's this other section in Salon de Femme about, um, he's talking to, with this lady about relationship, you know, and he's like, if he's like, Truth, are you willing to lose your husband? And she goes, well, no, you know, I, I love the guy. Like I wanna, and he goes, yeah. And if you were willing to lose him, you would be willing to include you and actually ask for what you'd like to have. And I was like, oh man, that's so true. We just stop ourselves from asking for what we'd like to have because we've decided, we've already decided, we've already made real that if we include ourselves and we actually ask for what we'd like to have, that we will lose. We've already decided that. Whereas when you become willing to lose, which means I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. Like if I lose, okay, I lose. But for the first time, I'm gonna have me. What ends up happening is everybody gets included and it always turns out greater than you could possibly imagine. Might you lose that person? Sure. Might you not? More likely, more likely you not. More likely you invite the other person or the situation into a, a, a space of different choice. But. What has to happen first is you gotta be willing to lose what you've made real. So what have you made so real that if you would choose to lose it, would free you to have total choice? And everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pock, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And sorry if you guys are new, that's the clearing statement. And you can go check out the website if you want more info on that. Um, Okay, cool. So that's sort of just a riff in and around the money thing. Go, go through the how to become money workbook or come to the calls or whatever's going to actually create space for you. All right. Okay, cool. Um, Christine Loomis. So uh, she said, I uh, well, so I sent what, the email that I sent out to ask you guys for questions mentioned that I went to a conference over the weekend. It was a network marketing conference and it was so great. And, um, and she said, uh, I found you last week and I love listening to you. I'm also in network marketing, but it doesn't excite me, so I'm not engaged with it. Every day, I follow the energy of beyond this reality to be shown, to activate and actualize all the potencies I had from all the four trillion years. Any tips are appreciated. And it's funny because I actually, Christine, I did email you back and I asked you, what are you waiting to be shown? And I didn't hear back from you. But are you guys making it real that? the universe is this vision showing fairy. Like at some point, you know, you're going to ask and you're going to ask and you're going to ask and all of a sudden you're going to see this like movie reel on the wall of what it is you're supposed to do that will include all of you and all your potency and, you know, all the things. And I say it like that because I'm fairly certain that's where I was functioning from for at least 42 years. Um, I remember a convert and, and so this is where I had made something very real I, and what the thing that I had made real is that there was there was a thing for me to do there was a purpose for me even though I wasn't using those words I was functioning as it um, what's the story I wanted to tell you about this uh, oh man it's gone okay cool so are you waiting to be are you waiting is anybody waiting 
are, are you waiting for the universe to show you? Are you waiting for a sign? Are you waiting? I saw the sign and it opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. You're the sign. You're the sign. And I find with this conversation, because we talk a lot about, you know, getting the energy of what you'd like your life to be like, definitely do that. Go to the awarenesschallenge.com. You can download a, a tool that will start to give you a sense of what you'd like your life to be like. And then we talk about following that energy. Definitely do that. But there's going to be a lot of times where you have no idea if you're following an energy or not. You're just choosing. There's going to be more than that. more times of that than there are times where you just like feel dialed in. And this is the gift of choice creates awareness. And if you make the feeling dialed in more real than just choosing, then you won't choose and you won't get awareness and you'll wait around for a sign. And I know I'm probably blowing this out of proportion, but we do, we blow it right out of proportion. So what are you waiting for? That if you didn't wait for it, it would empower you with total choice. And everything that doesn't allow that to show up, will you destroy it and create it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all land, charts, poison, yards. Okay, clearly I could talk about, I just looked at the time and I'm like, seriously, it's 32 minutes already. I could probably talk about this for three full calls. So if you want more of this conversation, I want to invite you to check out the calls. You can just go to crystaljoycrawford.com slash unreal. And if you love this conversation, I'd really love it if you'd torture your friends and share it with them. And um, what I'd invite you to look at today is all the places in your life where you feel like you have no choice or all the places in your life where you feel stopped or you feel, notice all of these has a feeling with them. That's also interesting. We're going to be talking about that on the calls. And just start to ask yourself, what have I made real here that isn't? What have I made real here that isn't? All right? Tag your friends in this if you know they need to see this. Um, and other than that, you guys, I'm so grateful you're in my world. Thank you for being live with me, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.